Welcome to the Love Your Life Podcast. My name is Stephanie. I'm a health and life coach, fitness enthusiast, entrepreneur, and a triathlete sport. I am here to share my tips to help you create harmony on all aspects of your life, health, career, spirituality, relationships, and personal development. Every week, you will be inspired to create a life you love and deserve. Don't forget to like, comment, and follow our sponsors, Scribed, unlimited audio and ebooks for $8.99 a month, and Rocky's Natural Body Products. Use the link in the show notes to sign up. This is episode one of Love Your Life Podcast. My name is Stephanie. I am the founder of Fitness Wellness Life and Rocky's Natural Body Products. I created this podcast to be able to share my tips on health, wellness, and lifestyle, living the life you love and deserve. I am a health coach and a fitness instructor. I personally have left my corporate job over a year ago. I worked in politics for quite a while, actually have my master's in public administration and was going down the route of becoming a politician. I still love politics. It's very near and dear to my heart. I follow the elections. I'm still one of those people that stay up late. I really support a lot of people's campaigns and really believe that that is the groundwork, working On the election side, running for office and voting is where you really lay down the foundation of how this government in the United States is run. Over the last year, I started to find that that career choice was no longer giving me the joy that I wanted. And I would say mainly because of the recent election for the president. I was really disappointed as far as the turnout and have been very disappointed in regards to what has been going on in this country ever since then. My biggest concern is really how much hatred that I have witnessed in my community, in the areas that I was serving. I was serving a lot of the minority community in Southwest Detroit, which is a high concentration of Hispanics and African Americans, and also uh, mixed incomes over in that area. We are not too far from Dearborn, Michigan, which has a huge Arabic population. And I started to see a lot of the people that I was serving being targeted on racial crimes. I've also noticed that in the news as of the last presidential election, when Trump was elected, was that There's been a huge influx in violent crimes in regards to school shootings. As of recently, since this podcast has been started on May 21st, as of last week, we've had another school shooting and it just keeps on skyrocketing. Ever since the election, I personally have stopped watching the news because I got so tired of the despair that I constantly saw Every single day, new and new development in regards to what is going on in the government, more hate crimes, more shootings. It just was constant negativity and I got tired of it. So I decided as of a year and about five months ago to take a hiatus when it came to all things uh, newsworthy. I still will scroll the internet or even go to like the local newspapers online and find the latest development. But to sit there and watch some of the news stations that I was watching all the time, I have cut that out completely. I do get a glimpse of it here and there in passing if I'm at the gym or listening to the radio, such as like NPR and other kind of things. But I really try to filter what I watch And since then, I have really taken the last year to discover what is my passion and left the corporate world doing a lot of community relations, lobbying was my background also, and helping out on political campaigns 
to doing a whole new career, which was something that I was always interested in, but it was a little bit too afraid to go through, mainly because I didn't know what my colleagues would have thought of changing careers like this. But I went into personal training to start off with, and then eventually got my certifications in nutrition and health coaching, mainly because I saw that the clients that I was serving, which is mostly female clients, they were progressing really well with their strength gains in the gym, yet there was still a factor that was missing, which was the nutritional aspect. And I would let them know that the hour or maybe even up to three hours, depending on how many times they saw me a week, that they do in the gym really is only a small equation when it comes to the overall health. If they are still going home and going to their vices, whether those are pop or alcoholic drinks, fatty foods, um, high sugar-laden foods, or just eating in abundance, that really is going to have a profound impact on their health. And then I also noticed that as I was learning a little bit more about nutrition and I was creating these really great um, plans for people as far as like, here's a suggestion on what to have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, there was still a lack when it came to implementing it. And I decided to go back and get um, my health coaching degree mainly because I wanted to figure out what was the behavioral aspects that was stopping my clients from really excelling, from really creating these habit changes that would be very beneficial for them. And I realized that we have a strong connection when it comes to food. Food is culture. Food represents love, comfort. There's a lot of connections to food and along with movement. And if we are not in the proper mindset to run to make those changes, or we don't have a strong enough reason why, whether it's a good reason or like, I really want to go and do a race coming up or um, something as I want to prevent having this illness that I saw take over my family. If you don't have that strong reason why, then those bad habits will sneak back up and you'll be really easy to succumb to them again. And you'll say, well, let's skip it. It's too hard to change them. I might as well continue down this route. So when I learned about that a little bit more and our connection and how to coach my clients to really find out their why and give them helpful tips and strategies throughout the course of the week or the month so that they can be able to take it one step at a time to make a habit change that lasts, I started to see a lot more success. So really creating a healthy life and a more balanced and joyful life for me and for my clients was to implement daily routines. Um, For me personally, it was to create a daily ritual in the morning, waking up on a positive mindset Um, really starting off of affirmations and meditation and then getting my body the hydration it needs first thing in the morning by drinking some water and then following up with some exercise and a good nutrition plan. But as I started to share these tips and strategies to my clients too, I started to see a huge shift. Um, And then for me, again, taking away a lot of that negativity that I was watching or hearing about on the news and really separating myself from some of the negative toxic people in my life, I created a lot more joy. I felt lifted as a little bit lighter, a little bit more enlightened. I reached back out to my spiritual side that I used to have before, but kind of strayed away from it. And I had a stronger connection with my family, with my friends, my loved ones, and my clients. And every day, every day I wake up excited, to start the new day, loving the fact that I have this flexibility in my schedule, even though I would wake up and teach a class as early as 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the morning and then go as late as 8 o'clock at night. My days are long, but I have that freedom and that flexibility throughout the course of the day to really do the things that I love to do, whether it is going to the gym Um, Spending time with my friends and my family this past weekend, it was gardening. I love to garden. It's springtime here in Michigan. 
and across the United States. But I say in Michigan because our springs come a little bit later than other people. So it's nice to have the warmer weather where I can actually plant something and not have to worry about it dying. I will probably talk about uh, my gardening a little bit more in another podcast and along with my morning rituals. So I just wanted to share a little bit about myself and why I created this podcast. Mainly my reason behind it was that I wanted to share a lot of really wealth of knowledge and information that I have and things that I'm passionate about. And I found myself originally trying to go down the blog route, and I do have a small blog, um, but trying to create that blog on a weekly basis would seem to be very hard for me. I'm more of an audio visual kind of person. So actually sitting down and taking the time out to write something became very difficult and um, I just wasn't inspired. And half the time when I am inspired, it's always, of course, as I'm not nearby a computer out hiking or riding somewhere or in the middle of a workout where it makes it very difficult for me to be like, oh, I got this inspiration. I got this creativity, but I have no way of writing it down. (laughs) So I decided that maybe podcasting is a better way of sharing this information that I have to share. Um, It's a little bit less of a tedious thing for me to actually have to sit there and write it down. I'm able to verbalize it and share it to a wider audience this way. Thank you for tuning into the Love Your Life podcast. All information and links for this podcast can be found in the show notes. If you like this episode and want to continue the conversation, you can email me at info at fitnesswellnesslife.com. And for more information to living a life you love, follow me on Instagram at FWL underscore Steph and on Facebook at Fitness Wellness Life. As always, you can schedule a free 30-minute call with me by going to www.fitnesswellnesslife.com. Thanks again, and don't forget to tune in next week for another inspiring episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and follow our sponsors, Scribed, unlimited audio and ebooks for $8.99 a month, and Rocky's Natural Body Products. Use the link in the show notes to sign up.